Hi, my name is Vicki Nguyen with ID8 TV at V3 Convention here, and I am with Richard Louie, and I'm going to ask him a couple of questions. Richard, how are you doing today? Uh, very well. It's, it's early, but it's, it's going to be a great day for the conference. How does it feel to see V3 progress? You know, every year it's gotten better. This year, if the opening ceremony is any indication, it's going to be the best. And I think that it's only indicative of how the energy behind digital media it continues to grow and that there's a hunger to understand what will be next and what can be next. And it's places like this where we get to discuss that edge, that frontier of what will be next in digital media and what are we talking about in this space and who are the faces behind all of these you know, virtual personas. And why do you think social media is so important now with journalism? You know, with journalism, uh, it, it's because we all consume more and we all put out more and we all have a greater awareness. And I'm talking about consumers of news, providers of news, and therefore expectations have grown. So social is so important to news because of its ability to give us a sense of, in many different ways, when the wave is going to hit. So I always equate it with a tsunami. As journalists, what we will do is we will look at when the water goes down, the way we can tell is on social. And then when it comes to dissemination as a journalist, if we need to get out information quickly, we can get it out very, very efficiently. These are things that we all know about. Uh, it's just that the, the marketplace is more accepting of it and more understanding of it. And once you have more understanding and more acceptability, then we can, you can use it. Because if you don't have those two things, then you'll, you, you're not able to use it. So it's a lot like coming out with something before people care about it, before they believe it's necessary, right? Like some people introduce new products, you're like, I don't really need that product, right? Because there's no problem yet. So social now clearly does satisfy a problem. And how do you feel about V3 and AAJA having these types of conventions and just bringing people together in the same field and educating them? Well, I mean, based on the last uh, question, the last uh, point that we, you were making there, Vicky, is that when we look at the energy behind it, then we know why this is important. So it's great that uh, AAJA LA is, is helping to get this done every year. More important is that we're having the conversation because it needs to happen. Um, social conferences, digital conferences around the country have only seen an increase uh, in interest. Uh, I was noting earlier in my keynote about the interest in awards. So even uh, the, the maturity level, and I mean maturity level meaning that you, therefore you have more complexity. So we, there are awards now for social media campaigns and not for profits. You, you didn't see that maybe two years ago. What does that say? It says that more complexity. Why more complexity? Because there's more maturity in the space. So conventions and conferences and summits like this, like V3, are important because they, they add value to that discussion to understand what is, what is important. And now for a question for budding journalism majors as myself. Ah. Um, What's a tip that you can give us? There's so many news stations out there and it's hard to get into yeah, yeah, a yep. place and sometimes they're not looking for people. What can we do? Uh, why do you want to get into journalism? I want to be able to tell stories to people. I want to make an impact. I want to be someone that people can look up to for the truth. Tips. <laughs> Ooh. It's hard. I would say understand that you have more than one interest at any one point and determine what those two or three interests are. One of them will be journalism, but what are the other two? And develop all three equally. And it's through that clash of the interests that you have passions for that will bring a better awareness of what you need to do next. That's a very general answer. Uh, and the way that I think you're going to come to those understandings of what those three passion areas are is by writing about them for yourself. Not a, not a diary, but a log. Yeah. Just write down, like, I really like doing this. Why do I? So if I like doing that, what are the next three steps I need to do to get there? Mm -hmm. Do the same thing for your passion number two, th same thing for the passion number three. So I guess my tip is to do something that you are very well trained to do, which is to write what you think and tell stories. Well, tell your own story, mm -hmm. but tell three of them. Three and, of right? Mm -hmm. And then look at them and say, okay, where in those three spaces can I do something that satisfies two of those steps? 
This way you can be developing more than one part of who you are. I know that it's not only in journalism, but in many different places, we'll overly focus on that one thing. And we just focus on that one thing, and that one thing doesn't happen, mm -hmm. we turn around and there's nothing there, right? Because you've been, you've been doing nothing else but just that one thing. So for budding journalists, the way we become better journalists is that we experience more, mm -hmm. we are able to offer more context, and obviously we need to become better communicators, meaning better writing, mm -hmm. better speaking, all those sorts of things. And the way we develop those skills is by, strangely enough, focusing sometimes on one or two other things, sometimes. Can you tell us maybe what about your biggest struggles when you first started out in journalism and how has that changed now? Oh, <laughs> I like that question. That's a really good question. Um, when I first got into the industry, I wasn't sure whether it was meant for me or I was meant for it. Mm -hmm. um, I did look out there for mentors uh, and it was tough to find. Uh, now I think there's more energy uh, in, in our space that you can find mentors. Uh, as Anne was saying yesterday, you know, she 25, 30 years ago was looking out for mentors and she said she couldn't find necessarily the mentor that fit every space for her. So when I first started, that difficulty was there. It's just less of a difficulty now. I think also uh, the difficulty I had is knowing whether it was a supply or demand problem as to why I didn't see mentors out there. And now I have a better understanding today that it's a little bit of both. So I have a little bit more comfort in that, you know, I, I like the space, I'm okay in it. And uh, I was worried actually, Vicky, when I first got in that I was not gonna survive. I gave it two years and I was, yeah. I mean, I was older, I was like 33 or whatever it was. And I was like, well, I'm gonna do it now or never, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have any plans for the future? You have such a great resume, I'm sure, already. And I'm sure there's probably things you want to do in the future. What would you like to do? Yeah, you know, just like the advice I gave you, mm -hmm. I always have three options that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. There's always something else. So right now, what you can see actively that I'm involved in is not only in journalism and MSNBC and NBC News, which are, are two great organizations to, to work with and have been so supportive of my development, that is a, the majority of my energy, but the other part uh, is in the not-for-profit space, mm -hmm. is to do as much as I can that I think is relevant and meaningful going down a certain road. So like with Plan International USA and being an ambassador for them, with the Epilepsy Foundation being uh, an ambassador for them, with APIASF, which focuses on underserved uh, college students that want to go to community college, I'm an ambassador for those. You don't just say, okay, I'll do whatever. No, you do it because you care about those things for several reasons. And they're all personal reasons, to be honest, as to why I support all three of those. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, you Thank bet. you for being here. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm Vicki Nguyen with Richard Louis at V3 Convention.